guys. We are going to start today with our unit six <laughs> questions. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have a little technical difficulties, those of you at home, but we are getting started now with our unit six questions. We're going to go over those, all right? Okay, everybody um, should have done these, and some of you have already emailed them to me, and I didn't check those for accuracy or anything, so we're just, I just need to get done. I don't want to email because I wrote it all out. It's okay. Okay, we'll tell you the thing. Okay, good. All right. So, a few of you had talked to me and said that you were struggling with the isms in the slideshow, the first three, okay? Some of you had trouble finding, I think, the nationalism one or something. So, um, let's go over those real quick. The three isms. Okay, what were, what was the first one y'all found? Nationalism. Okay, nationalism, Molly. What is nationalism? A deep feeling of attachment to one's own nation. Creating competition between the okay, You need to speak louder so people at home can also hear. A deep feeling of attachment to one's own nation. Created competition between countries. Okay, it also unified the people of the nation. Alright, so that's nationalism. Okay, this, what's another one? Somebody got it. Java. 
over on the eastern front. Doesn't send as many over here. The French are better than they thought. And um, so they get bogged down in France, leads to trench warfare. You know, then they're having the race to the English Channel with these trenches. They get them all the trenches and that war just falls down with them. And so they end up with this giant two front war that really goes nowhere for a really long time. So this um, basically kind of saved the allies in a way, but it's, you know,
That would work too. Yeah. I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be that or that they kept the supplies from during the day. Both of them, it's what they, that is what they did, so it would work. Um, I kind of had put, and like I said, either one would work, but the British Navy cleared the Mediterranean of enemy ships, and the British Navy closed sea routes from the North Sea to the Atlantic, and then I had put an asterisk. By creating the naval blockade against Germany and the superpowers, the British kept much needed war supplies and food from reaching the enemy. So, whichever way you went with that, it was fine. Okay? Um, what new weapon did the Germans finally develop to penetrate it? Uh, Wilhelm Bauer invented the Evo. Okay, and I wasn't supposed to put on there a uh, named person because it was kind of over a series, and so, yeah, good for you to try to find that. Oh, yeah. um, but yeah. it was just <laughs> It was just supposed to be you both, okay? So you don't have to know anything. All right, and um, it's very interesting because when you look and you really study that about the U-boat, you boys might really want to go and um, I could send you a link if you're interested on the history of submarines and the U-boats and stuff. And it's very fascinating because it's the U-boat. You're going to go on, please do not send me a link. I see it. Well, no one's just like, thank you. It's just like Borsha. <laughs> <laughs> not just boys, no. Okay. But, it's, but, it's like the, but, it, but Ubo is what almost won the Central Powers the war, or Germany the war, and it's what eventually lost them the war. Did you know that? So it's what? What? Okay, how did it lose the other side? It is. It was made America join, which okay. made them lose. But it was what almost won in the war because because when they find you know they had blown up the Titania and they and it's called um, some of these next the total warfare when they did that total unrestricted warfare you know and so they finally said in 1917 or whatever we're going to blow everything because for for a while they backed off of that after they blew up the Lusitania and America said. Stop it, or whatever, and they they didn't want America to get in the war, so they backed off and they stopped blowing up as many things. They still were blowing up things, but they didn't go completely until 1917. They got, but they were really starving to death, so they finally had to go back to total war and blow up everything again. And when they did, that's when America was like, we're in. You're blowing up everything now. We, this, this is against. It's against all the all the rules of warfare. Because they're blowing up the civilians. They're blowing up everything. And so Germany was really doing it because they had to, in a way, to survive. But at the same time, and, and they were so so successful at it. But also being successful at it, they didn't realize that the Allies were getting really good at developing radar. To detect them, and it also made the Allies develop a, uh, like their um, ability to do um, convoys. They were developing convoys, and that was how they were getting the um, submarines to come out of the water, and they could shoot them. And so it, all that, that's how they detected what was in the about the Zimmerman note, which they they intercepted the Zimmerman note, which was the note to Mexico saying, hey, if you get in the war, we'll, if you'll come get in the war, then we'll give you parts of America back. And that was the last straw when America said, I don't think so. We will now come in and give it back. So, anyway, so when, and then, but coming in, the, but when America joined the war, because Russia had just gotten out of the war, and if when Russia left, there was no way the Allies were about to win. But that, the submarine warfare, the total Warfare by the submarine was what got America in the war, and that truly was why they won. So it really is the submarine warfare that almost won the war, but truly lost them the war. So, you know, it's one of those things in history that you go, huh, who knew? You know, kind of a cool thing. All right, now the Germans also became masters of the sky during World War One. when who? Savannah. Anthony Fokker developed a way to mount what? Machine guns. Machine guns on planes. Before this, planes were mainly used for? Yes, for content. Yes, fine. Very good. 
All right, um, Psalm 91 is often called the soldier's psalm. Read, read Psalm 91 and list three parts of the psalm that you think would inspire a soldier on the battlefield and why. Thank you, Sal. We've not heard from you today. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So who would like to answer this one?
that all that was converted during the war. So that's a total war. Okay? Rationing. What's rationing? Yeah. Um, control of the kinds or amounts of goods people can have. Right. Now, the U.S. did not have to ration. England did. Um, Russia did. Many other, all European countries did. But we did not. Um, but yeah, so they would actually say you can only have you know, this much meat, this much whatever, um, no butter, no, all the things, because they all had to go toward the war. No sugar, no water, no coffee. I mean, lots of things were taken away during the war and everything. So um, now, in America, one reason we did not ration is because of the next one. So what's the next one? Propaganda. What is propaganda, Lily? Really? One-sided information that binds themselves. Now, we usually hear the word propaganda and think of it as extremely negative, right? And you propaganda, you're like, well, that's got to be bad. Well, during the war, they were able to use propaganda, both in England, especially, and the U.S., and use it as a positive thing to get, to get people to be behind the war effort. If you've seen Captain America, whatever, they, that was kind of like their, their World War II way they were doing it. They made their own clothes. They, you still don't understand everything 
single thing that could went to the war. Everything went to the war. So the propaganda was positive, but it made everybody, everybody from speakers <coughs> to famous people, they were all going out on their so tours, but everything went to the war. So it was like Elvis was in the war. Okay, so 1917 turned out to be a turning point in World War One. The two main reasons. What were the two main reasons in 1917? Number 12. Yeah. Russia left the war. We had a revolution call and America joined the war. Number 13. You can give me all those answers. In 13. Wait, read the whole thing or just the little words? Just read the whole thing. Whoa! No, it's it's still a long thing. Oh, it's still a long thing. Oh, God. Okay, last one. Sorry, last one. Molly, go ahead. German U-boats began to sink neutral ships in order to break the British naval blockade. The sinking of the Lusitania on May 7th 
what the? No. She just said that. <laughs> oh my god. We no, have like two more. Go to the chair.
we, you know, we were ready to join the pool. We had like literally about 100,000 people come and sign up immediately, but we didn't have anybody who was ready to go. Like, we don't have troops trained. So we're in a massive, you know, trying to get people ready to go. And so we get them, and we, but we do start and, and get them in general person, It's very important. One thing we don't want to do is get our troops over here and start putting them under the uh, other commanders. Uh, General Pershing fought very hard to keep them under American leaders. Um, that was very important to them. They had been trained by Americans, and he just knew Americans needed to be under Americans. They didn't need to be under French leaders. They didn't need to be under other people. Because those people are tired and worn out and have different ways of doing things. And he knew if we could keep the Americans under his command, we could make a difference. Okay? So he fought for that and got it. So General Pershing kept Americans under American control. All right? That's always been a big thing to Americans in every war. We have fought hard to get that. Okay, so the French and British at this point are basically desperate. You know, they are worn out. And now that Russia is out of war, the Germans are moving all their troops from the eastern to the western front. Okay? This is not good news. All right, so it's a race to see who can get most troops to the Western Front. Well, the uh, Americans are joining on the West, and the Germans are rushing their people there. It's just who can get the most there the fastest. Okay? All right? In 1918, here in March, this is you know, the next year, the Germans begin their three final offenses. What is an off what's offense? Attack. That's right. So the Germans have three final attacks up their sleeves. And they're, you know, remember, it's the Allies who are worn out, right? The Germans are feeling good. They just got rid of Russia. So they moved all their troops to one side, and they're ready to attack, attack, attack. They figure now's the time to go for it before any more Americans can arrive, right? Okay? Um, and they don't think the Americans are going to be very good either, by the way. They figure they haven't in there, they don't know what they're doing, so they figure they can really, really make some ground here. But, um, in this, in, on D here, the American troops fight in the, for the first time in the Battle of Bella, or Bella, or the Woods. Okay, this is June 6, 1918. Alright, and this is the very first battle for the U.S. Marines in World War One, Okay? Marines have shown up. They've never faced, the Marines have never fought overseas, and so we're fixing to see what the Marines look like in battle. Okay? This was a decisive defeat. And for the Germans, okay? It, or, I put against the Germans, but it means what I mean is that the Germans. Allies won. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe you should change that to four. Or against makes more sense to me. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Decide, decisive a win? Should we say decisive win against the Germans? Does that make more sense? Yes. yes. Decisive win against the Germans. There we go. Number two. I think a win will make more sense. Decisive win against the Germans taking a highly fortified wood and eliminating an entire offensive German line. So you get it, the Marines join the force and they go in and they and they've been held up at this place. Like it had been in these, in these trenches for years, okay? They've made no progress. They've literally only moved like four miles or something in all this time. And the Marines showed up, and they decide, you know, the Germans have made an attack here or whatever, and so they're having to go against them. And what happened is they go in there, and they're, they're attacking, and they're fighting, and at one point, the, um, it looks really bit bad. And so the, the Allied commander says, retreat, retreat. we got to get out. we got to get out. Because, I mean, there's no way that they're going. And the Marines, they do not know what that word means. Okay? And the Marine commander said, no, we are not retreating. 
we aren't going to do it. He said, if now, if, if we retreat, we are going, I mean, this, this is it. If we retreat, they're coming over our line. We, we have to keep going. We have to risk it. And so he refused to obey the command. And he said, uh-uh, Marines charge, Marines charge. And they were like, if you keep going, you're all going to die. So the rest of them took off. And the Marines said, Marines go, Marines go, Marines go. And literally, it was just a Marine. And they went in there, and they got, and they didn't know, I mean, they weren't familiar with this forest or whatever, and they just went in there, and they lost tremendous casualties. But they knew how to snipe it. And they knew what they were doing. And they got in there, and they took these people out, and they broke through an entire offensive line. The Germans had two or three. I mean, they broke through the German line. And they get, and um, it was, it was just amazing. It was the, it was the highest percentage, like um, casualties that have been since the Civil War in a, in a Marine regiment. But, but look what the, um, look what the gains were. Despite high casualties, they lost 1,811, 1,811 of 9,777 Marines. But the Marines refused to retreat, and they gained the nickname Devil Dogs. And um, incredible respect among the Allied troops. They, after that, they were like, okay, the Marines will come in. They can seriously fight. They are nothing to be messed with. The Marines are a whole different group of people. And it was, and totally the kind of confidence and enthusiasm that it literally changed losing the war. You know what I mean? It looks like they have no way to win. And in this lowest point, they win this battle that they had. They were the underdog of underdogs. Like, this changes everything about their attitude and their 